the recording has started. So in this lesson, we're going to discuss some of the common ways that we secure uh, ductwork and other uh, devices to to walls and uh, ceilings and what have you. So in an HVAC system, we have to be able to assemble the system. We got to put components together and the requ equipment. So in order to do that, we're going to use a variety of different fastening devices to make sure that that stuff is properly secured and it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, you're going to definitely use sheet metal screws on your ductwork. You're going to be using bolts to hold uh, compressors uh, together and depending on the type of compressor, uh, your hermetics or semi-hermetic compressors, you're going to be using nuts and bolts to to do that. So you're going to have a major range of different types of fastening devices to get the job done. Okay, We are not going to cover every last one, but we are going to cover the most commonly used fasteners that we're going to see in the field. So the first ones is obviously our screws and our bolts. Okay, screws and bolts are both types of threaded fasteners. Your screws are typically smaller in diameter and length uh, than your bolts. Your screws may or may not uh, thread into a nut, but you'll have a lot of typical types of screws that you're going to see in the field. And those are typically going to be your sheet metal screws, wood screws, and machine screws. The most common ones that we're going to use out in the field is obviously your sheet metal screws. We do use wood screws in the field to attach hanging straps to wood rafters, for example. Uh, machine screws have standard threads and screws into your nuts or pre-threaded type holes. So here you have an example of a standard hex bolt sizing and thread um, pitches of different types of bolts that you are going to uh, see out there. But note on this one here, your head sizes may differ from what sh uh, is shown due to the differences between your metric and your standard sizes. Okay, so you got your 4 millimeter by 0.07 thread, your 10 millimeter by 1.25 thread. So you have all different um, measurements out there. Okay, so to measure your lengths are from under the head to the end of the bolt. So that would give you your, your size. You also may run into what we call the wood screw sizing chart. Okay, working with wood screws is basically common sense. Uh, nothing really too crazy to go over. Uh, your shank diameter is measured on the smooth portion of the screw above your thread. Uh, when you are working with wood screws, it's good to use uh, a soap or wax to lubricate the screw into the wood. Uh, keep brass screw heads from twisting off. Use the same size steel screw to thread the wood and then insert the brass screw after. Uh, use your screwdriver bit is less likely to slip when you use a Phillip or a Robinson or what we call a square head style screw. Uh, use a drill with an adjustable chuck clutch to avoid stripping all of your screw heads, uh, and then drill pilot holes to prevent the wood from splitting and allow for a tighter joint. Your sheet metal screws, these are typical specifications for a sheet metal screw. Might be a half inch number eight hex style sheet metal screw, which is really kind of what you see in this picture here. The length of the screw is given from the tip of the screw to the base of the head 
of the screw as you can see in our picture here for a flathead screw the length of it is basically from the from the head of the screw all the way to the tip your round washer head type screws is from the base of the head of the screw to the tip and your pin would be from the base of the head to your tip the most common screw in HVAC is going to be your half inch or three quarter inch HVAC uh, screw. The diameter of the screw is given as a standard number such as number eight or a number ten for your most commonly used. The hex head sheet metal screw can come with or without a screwdriver slot and those are also commonly found as well as long along with your quarter and five sixteenths hex head sheet metal screws. So here's your example of what we were just talking about. You can have your sheet metal screw with a screwdriver slot or without. Now, both are relatively common in the field. Your pointed sheet metal screw are often referred to as self-starting screws. And this is because they can be started without having to pre-drill a hole into the sheet metal. Uh, these screws can be used on sheet metal ranging from 30 gauge all the way to about 18 gauge metal. Then you'll have your self-threading sheet metal screws. These must have a pilot hole drilled into the metal before the screw is actually started. Otherwise, it's just going to walk on you. And if you're really struggling with it, you're just going to dole out the tip. And you're really going to struggle to try to get the metal to screw through. So a small notch at the tip of the screw acts as a thread tap to basically cut the thread into the metal as the screw is being installed. Then you'll also have what we call your self-drilling or self-tapping sheet metal screws. Okay, These have a tip built like a small drill bit. And as you're drilling the screw in, it kind of just does the work for you. Okay, These screws can be used on sheet metal thicknesses from anywhere of 30 to about 16 gauge metal. Okay, The use of an electric drill with a magnetic head uh, nut driver can be useful when using self-starting or self-tapping screws. Your self-starting screws are the most commonly used on many of your job sites for fabrication and installation. When using these screws, it's important not to strip <laughs> them out over simply over tightening them. It is good practice to use a drill with an adjustable torque chuck on them so that you are not over tightening and then basically ruining the screw. Use a drill such as this uh, for the job. You can adjust the torque by simply turning the little knob to your number setting. In this case, this is actually a DeWalt hammer drill, which is also a very good drill to have in the field because not only does it act as a sheet metal screw gun, you can also use that as a hammer drill to get through uh, some concrete and a lot of harder objects if needed. Uh, your screw head designs. You have different types out there. You have your hex, your round, your pan, and your flat. Your hex heads are the most common ones that's going to be found in HVAC. However, you may run into your round heads for and pan heads for your uh, electrical boxes and terminals. And they can also have a flat or Phillips slot on them as well. Okay, another great tool to have is your little adapter. Uh, for that has a magnetic screwdriver bit inside the collar. Basically what this guy does, it holds the screw in place while you're trying to drill it into the metal so it's not walking on you or dropping. Um, another great tool to have. Your wood and sheetrock screws are often used to attach hanging straps to your wood structure. Now remember you're going to be dealing with uh, branch duct you're going to be dealing with flexible duct, so you're going to have to have some sort of means to support that piece of duct work 
so that it doesn't sag or have uh, a lot of stress. So in some cases, you will have to use wood screws or sheetrock screws to get the job done. So the biggest difference between these two is that wood screws is shiny and has a portion of the shank that does not have any threads. Your sheetrock screws are almost always black and their uh, threads extend the whole length of the screw, okay, such as these. Okay, your nuts and bolts have machine threads. Uh, a typical specification of a bolt would be, you know, a three inch by half inch hex head. Okay, and the first dimension is the length of the bolt. The second dimension is the outside diameter. So as for example here, let me go back, sorry. Um, you have a three inch long by half inch diameter. Okay, the NC refers to the fact that is a national coarse threaded bolt and it has 13 threads per inch with a hex head. Okay, another type of thread that is listed is either an NC for national coarse or NF which means national fine. Your nails also come in a variety of sizes, lengths, and material along with your different heads. The most common nail for HVAC is going to be your steel and they may have a zinc coating on them obviously to resist rusting. Okay, your common nails, they have large diameters, flat head nails used for general wood framing and construction. Your box nails, they're similar to common nails in shape, but use uh, and use, but they are more uh, thinner in diameter. Your finished nails have a smaller diameter and a smaller head nail used for attaching trim boards to doors and cases and stuff like that. Basically more for finish work. Okay, and there they are, your common nail, your box nail, and your finishing nail. Okay, and then you got more nails, big box of nails, lots and lots and lots of nails. Your concrete fasteners and anchors, uh, the term concrete fasteners or concrete anchors can be used interchangeably. However, fasteners are non-structural while anchors can be used for both non-structural and structural attachments. Okay, your common, your concrete fasteners are in two different general groups or categories. You have your drive-in type anchors and then you have your pre-drilled. Anchors are almost always pre-drilled but some can be uh, pre-placed before your concrete uh, is poured. You have your driven in concrete nails. These can be installed using a hammer or with a gun or ballistic charge. Okay, the hammering in concrete nails are usually short and work best with uh, driven with a few hammer blows. Your ballistic concrete nail guns may be uh, trigger activated or hammer strike activated. Uh, in both cases, they use a small charge that resemble a 22 caliber blank cartridge to drive the nail in quickly. The nail length and cartridge powder must be matched to do the job so that the nail is driven into the desired depth. So obviously when you are using one of these, you're going to always have your eye protection on when using these tools in the anticipation of flying chips or cracking or exploding concrete. Very, very important. So there you have your two different types of concrete anchors. You have your hammer in type and then you have your drill in type. These guys here are most commonly going to be used in your concrete. These guys are going to be commonly found if you're using sheetrock and stuff like that. In order to get your anchors into uh, concrete, you're going to need to use a special bit, commonly called your concrete bit. To do this, you're also going to need to use the hammer drill. Your hammer drill is a very important tool to have out in the field. However, they can be very dangerous. 
when you are using a hammer drill, it is extremely important that you have both hands on the hammer drill as you are working the concrete hole. I have seen in many cases and in my own experiences that when hammer drills are being used and they are driven into concrete, they sometimes catch. Sometimes there's rebarb and other stuff that's in the concrete which will cause the hammer drill to almost lock. Okay, and when that happens, the hammer drill is going to kick and it's going to rotate on you. Very, very dangerous situation. So in order to control the hammer drill, you need to have both hands on the extension and on the trigger and have full control of the drill at all times. Be very, very mindful of what you are doing when dealing with the hammer drill and drilling through concrete. Your rivets is a small unthreaded piece of metal that is installed through a pre-drilled hole. Once it is through the hole, the end of the rivet is enlarged so that it will not fit back through the hole. The process of enlarging the end of is called upsetting the rivet. Okay, Pop rivets are usually made out of aluminum, but sometimes other metals such as copper or stainless steel, depending on what you are actually trying to do. Okay, your pop rivet, it has a central shaft that is placed in a pop rivet gun. The pop rivet comes in a variety of sizes, ranging from anywhere between eighth to a quarter inch diameter. And that length is determined by the distance from the tip to the head of the pop rivet. So there's your pop rivet gun. You would insert the rivet into the end of the gun, and then you would just simply give the gun a couple of pumps, and then it breaks off the, um, the shaft. To remove a rivet, you are actually going to have to drill out the head. Take a drill, drill through the head, take a screwdriver, pry off the head, and then take the screwdriver and push out the shank to release the rivet. You will also run into staples. Okay, Your staples hold uh, by either driving their points into a soft uh, material such as wood or by having legs folded such as like a stapler. Okay, Your staples come in one standard width. They can be purchased with a variety of lengths of legs, such as from anywhere between a quarter to about 15 sixteenths of an inch. Uh, your duct staplers are designed so that the, t the tips of the staple are bent outward as the staple is driven into the fabric. Okay, Commonly found in a lot of your ductboard type uh, ductwork. Remember, that's your fiberglass type uh, ductwork. Very, very flimsy stuff, but it's still commonly found. So to put this stuff together, you would simply take your, your stapler and staple along the seam all the way down. And then you would take your uh, aluminum tape, cover that seam with it, and then seal it with mastic to make a 100% uh, sealed piece of ductwork. Your tape that you're going to run into a lot of times is going to be your aluminum tape, which is going to be used on your ductwork for all of your seams and joints so that we don't have any leaks. And then obviously your electrical tape for all of your electrical connections. The quality of the tape used will directly affect the length of time it stays in place to seal the ductwork. And it's because of the heat in the attic, vinyl and cloth tape uh, it dries out over time and then becomes hard and brittle and then it eventually falls off. So the best type of tape that you're going to use when you're in those type of conditions is your aluminum tape. Okay, for aluminum tape though, it is pressure sensitive tape as in are usually formed to the surface to create a tight fit. Okay, they have a rubber or acrylic adhesive that is protected on the roll with a paper backing. The paper backing is removed when the tape is being used. Okay, the adhesive on that tape is very, very tacky. If, if it is accidentally touched, 
to any surface before it is uh, before it is difficult to or is practically impossible to remove. So you only use this tape when you're absolutely ready to make your connection and seal your joints. Um, this is also has a paper back that needs to be removed before it is applied to the surface. Okay, and there is your aluminum tape. Okay, once the tape is in place, it needs to be smoothed out to ensure a proper seal. And this is, uh, if not, air bubbles will be trapped under the tape, which will dry out the mastic. And then eventually what will happen is the tape, tape becomes brittle and then it falls off. Okay, other adhesives that you're going to run into when you're dealing with HVAC work is your mastic, your glues, and your caulks. Uh, generally, an HVAC mastic is used uh, to seal large areas, such as your duct joints. Glues are used to hold items together, and caulks are obviously for sealing cracks and uh, other things. Okay, all three are classified as adhesives. Uh, adhesion is their ability to stick to a surface. Cohesion is their ability to stick to themselves. And when using adhesives, the surface needs to be cleaned, dry, and free of loose material. Okay, adhesives may be water-based or use other types of volatile organic compounds as their solvents. Some adhesives have a flammable VOC, while others have hazardous fumes. Okay, some adhesives obviously can be paintable as well. Your tie straps. Tie straps are usually made of nylon and are widely used. Uh, large sizes are used to secure flexible duct to start collars and boots. Your tie straps must be resistant to UV light. It must have a tensile strength of about 150 pounds and a service temperature of approximately 165 degrees. Okay, and here's an example of using your tie straps. This guy here is actually using a piece, uh, using a tie wrap um, gun and a flex uh, a flex cutter. So here you can see that he's actually taking the tie strap and tying the inner uh, piece of the flex buck duct to the collar. And then what he will do is he will take this outer um, layer, push it up, up against the, the duct, and then apply another tie wrap to secure the, um, the flex duct to the piece of duct work. <laughs> 